What's up guys and welcome back to the question where you have the questions and I have the answers and today we're finally addressing it. I know it has been three months now since the October 7th attack on Hamas and the resurgence of the Israel-Palestine, I'm going to say conflict, I know it's a controversial term, but I'm going to say conflict for, for consistency. Um, I'm finally going to talk about it. It has been a long time, but I think I finally have something to say on the matter, so yeah. But before we get started, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you are new. I upload videos every Wednesday. Um, just all kinds of content today. We're doing more educational, academic, philosophical search, but sometimes I just do stuff about being asexual, stuff about being queer. Sometimes I do fan theories or reviews on TV shows, movies, books that I have experienced. Um, so if that's what your vibe is, please join the crew. Um, with that being said, let's get on to the video. So before I get started onto the actual analysis of what I'm going to be talking about, I just want to preface this by saying that I know it has been three months since the attack occurred, and this has been an ongoing thing for a lot longer. And if you look back in my past videos, I have made a video about this. Um, my opinions have probably definitely changed by then because I have known a lot more, I've been more exposed to this um, than I was then. But I haven't really been talking about this, mainly because one, it happened while I was at school and I don't have time to really make that many posts while I am in school, so I haven't made a big video about it, but I also haven't made a big video about anything. Um, and two, it has been really hard to be Jewish. I am Jewish. It's been really hard to be Jewish since this event happened, not because of the anti-Semitism. DU as a school has actually been really great and there has not been any anti-Semitism on campus, nor has there been that much Islamophobia, which is I'm very thankful for. But it's been hard to be Jewish among other Jews because I am not a Zionist, I do not support Israel, I do not love Israel. Um, I do not feel this innate connection to Israel, the land or the state that other Jews feel. And that makes it really hard to be in Jewish spaces during times like this because I have posted about this on Instagram initially, just like posting different perspectives and how people were doing and what was happening. And I got a, most, all of the hate comments that I got, all of the angry DMs I got were from other Jews who I thought were my friends. And that is why I have basically not spoken about this at all um, on any public platform. I do on my Instagram keep up regular updates on what is happening, just objective, non-biased updates, um, or as unbiased and objective as I can be since, you know, the news cycles are not really the best at doing that. But I always try to do research to fill in the other side that may be left out when reporting on this news. Um, but. I did want to get on here and really talk about Israel as a Jewish state. I feel like that is something that is thrown around a lot in support of Israel, um, especially among Jews and among non-Jews, is that Israel needs to exist because it, Jews need a safe place to go. It is the only existing Jewish state and so we have to maintain it because Jews have just endured so much. And I'm talking about this and I want to break down the difference between an ethnocracy and a theocracy because I was talking to my dad about this conflict and he raised a point that I had never heard before and he said that he cannot support Israel and its actions because it is not a Jewish state, it is not governed itself by Jewish values. And I found this really interesting because we don't really think about that when discussing why we support Israel or why we don't support Israel. Most Jews that I've spoken to support Israel because they're like, oh, it's a Jewish state. It is one place where we can be safe. We deserve to have our own place after the Holocaust and the rest of history in which we have endured intense persecution and execution because of our very existence. And so we deserve to feel safe. And therefore to them that justifies any action that the Israeli government takes. Um, but we never really think about how that's representing us as Jews and what it means 
to the rest of the world to support this thing and why that could maybe lead to hate is especially since most people don't understand the difference between an ethnicity and religion and the really weird gray space that Judaism exists in. And so I want to break that down for us today. So to start, I want to say that Judaism is labeled as an ethno-religion. It is a both an ethnicity and a religion. However, the more that I think about it and the more that other research and scholars think about it, it's more of a nationalist identity or a national identity. And here's why I say that, because you know, Judaism is a religion. It is one that someone can follow. It is one that someone can convert to. However, a lot of Jews, especially in the United States, are not overly religious. However, they are still Jewish. And so that leads us to believe, okay, it's Judaism is an ethnicity. Jew, to be Jewish is you can be ethnically or culturally Jewish. However, that's not as correct either because there are different cultures and different ethnicities of Judaism because, you know, we were spread out across Europe and we all, and the, and the world, and we all developed the religion, we developed our own cultures and foods differently. And so like, I'm Ashkenazi Jewish, and that means that my family descends from like Eastern Europe. And so that's the form of Judaism that we practice. And that's the culture, that's the food that we eat. That's the language that we speak. Um, and then there's Sephardic Jews that come from Spain and Portugal and the Iberian Peninsula, and they speak a different language, and they eat different foods, and they practice their faith differently. And then there's Mizrahi Jews, who Jews who stayed in the Middle East, and they speak, of course, a different language, and they have different foods and different practices, and their Judaism looks different. And there's Ethiopian Jews. And so these all these ethnicities within Judaism. And a lot of times we don't get along with each other because we're just so different that in some cases, two different ethnic groups of Judaism are barely recognizable to each other. Um, especially in the terms of like Ashkenazi Judaism and then Mizrahi Judaism or Arab or like Arab Jews, completely different. You would not think that they were the same religion at all. And so Judaism isn't really an ethnicity at that point, but it is a group thing. And so I'm saying it's more of a national identity than an ethnicity or religion, but it is also an ethnicity and a religion. Um, but yeah, so we, we exist in this weird gray space and I think more religions are becoming more of this gray space as these things take on an identity outside of the religion itself, a more cultural identity. I'd say Jude uh, Jewish is also very much a culture, even though it's a very diverse culture and it shifts, as I said, where your parents came from and how you've developed in, in those areas. Um, and however, most people don't know that. It is mainly defined as a religion, even if most Jews are not that religious. Um, and I say most Jews are not that religious because in the U.S. obviously we are secularizing, not just the Christians, but Jews as well. Um, and you see a lot more people of the reform movement or conservatives or a lot of Jews who say that they are like atheists or agnostics, but they're still culturally Jewish. I, for example, am not very religious. I do religious rituals and I say the prayers because it's important to my culture that this language survives and that I do these things and I understand where I'm coming from. However, I don't believe in God. I, you know, but, but I like it. It's nice. It's a very good community activity. And it's like, I, I like that people believe in it. Um, and also because like Orthodox Jews and ultra Orthodox Jews are not a majority of the Jewish population in the U S nor are they a majority of the population in Israel. Um, and those are two countries that have the highest population of Jews. Um, so I would say the majority of Jews are not that religious anymore. They're not entirely secular, but they're not that religious anymore. Um, and so labeling Israel as a theocracy is not accurate. And my dad is correct on that account. Um, and here's why. So a theocracy is a state or government that is governed by a deity or a religious belief. Um, a good example is ancient Greece 
which was governed by, you know, the Greek deities, and they had priests and people who could communicate with the gods, and that would inform what their laws and their actions were. Same thing with ancient Egypt, in which the pharaoh spoke as kind of like a conduit between the deities and the people, and could pass divine judgment, and was seen as kind of a living god. Um, modern examples would be, like, a lot of Islamic states, like Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, in which they enforce Quran law and Sharia law um, on its people, and that's what a lot of their laws are made up from, are based off of the teachings of the Quran. Um, whether they're accurate or not, and we can dispute that in a later video, but that's a modern example of a theocracy. Having an official state religion is different because it does not necessarily mean that their laws are governed by that religion. For example, Thailand is a Buddhist country. They have, their official religion is Buddhism, Theravada Buddhism. However, they're not imprisoning people for not practicing mindfulness and not meditating like twice a day, you know? Their laws are not made up based off of Buddha's words. They just think that Buddhism is really cool, is really important to them, and so that's their official religion because a lot of people are Buddhist, and that's really important to their country, but they're not going to be making laws based off of Buddhism. Um, the Catholic Church in a lot of places in like old, old Europe was a kind of theocratic state or created theocratic states because, you know, Catholicism was the main driver of law, um, and the Catholic Church really had their roots in lawmaking and passing that judgment. Now I think the best example would be like the Vatican City, which is technically its own country. That is a theocracy because they do everything based off of Catholic belief and the word of God. So now that we know what a theocracy is um, and that Judaism is both a religion and I would say a nationalist identity in addition to maybe an ethnicity, I'm going to say my dad is correct. Israel is not a theocracy. It does not make its laws based off of Jewish law. It does not follow the Torah. They don't enforce kosher. There are a lot of people there who are not kosher. There are a lot of people there who don't believe in God. Um, and so its laws are relatively similar to any other kind of non-theocratic state. Um, it is just like living this life. Not everybody there is Jewish. Not everybody there practices Judaism. And so they don't enforce Jewish law. They don't make the decisions based off of God. However, they do use God to justify their existence on that land because, you know, Israel was a land gifted to the Jews long, long, long ago before we were exiled. Um, and so that is their, they do utilize God to justify their existence in that space. However, God's word is not in, does not inform the lawmaking process or the rulings of their judicial branch. Now, what is an ethnocracy? Because these are very different, and this is something that doesn't often come up when discussing and or criticizing Israel, is that even though it is not a theocracy, it does not follow Jewish law, it is an ethnocracy. So what is an ethnocracy? An ethnocracy is a state or government which prioritizes one ethnic group over the other. And obviously you can say that Israel is an ethnocracy. The country is run almost entirely by Jews. I'm gonna say almost because I can't actually prove that everybody in their government is Jewish. However, I know that they have exactly one political party which contains non-Jews. And that political party currently has no seats in the Knesset. And that means that they have no place in government. So I am inclined to say they have only Jews in their governing, like in the Knesset, which is their parliament or Congress, if you're American. Um, Netanyahu is obviously Jewish and I'm pretty sure Jewish people are who run the judicial branch as well. Um, and and most of the country is set up to benefit Jews over all else. However, the laws are not made with Jewish law in mind because there are other people and other ethnicities in Israel. Like they have a large Arab population. They do have Palestinians in, Jew in Israel as well as other tourists, but it is made and set up to benefit Jewish citizens and Jewish people 
even Jewish people who are not from Israel over all else, which is why Jews whose family have maybe never set foot in Israel, who have never been to the Middle East, have right of return if they can prove they are Jewish, and people who were kicked out of the Palestinian region due to the Nakba and to the Israeli um, War of Independence do not have the right of return. Like they do prioritize Jewish settlement and Jewish presence in Israel over all else. And that makes it an ethnocracy because that's literally what an ethnocracy is. Another example of, of an ethnocracy, I would say, one could argue the US is because we prioritize I would say we don't have really an ethnocracy, it's more of like a race-based hierarchy. An ethnocracy would be like India, which you could also argue is a theocracy, because I'd say India is both a theocracy and an ethnocracy. It's an ethnocracy that is becoming a theocracy, if that makes sense, because it does prioritize Hindus, and Hinduism is both an ethnicity as well as a religion. If anything, it's more an ethnicity than a religion. And so they do prioritize Hindus um, than over any other ethnicity or non-Hindus. Um, and they do make decisions based off of, well, at least they used to, and they're starting to again, they make a lot of decisions based off of Hindu law and Hindu beliefs. Um, so, yes, Israel, not a theocracy, but it is an ethnocracy. Let's talk about why that's important. Israel, because it is the only existing Jewish state, and I'm going to say that it is a Jewish state, unlike my dad, because it is an ethnocracy, and so even though it's not religiously Jewish, it is ethnically and nationally Jewish. Um, and we have seen this rallying of Jewish nationalism around the existence of Israel, even from Jews who have not stepped foot in Israel. Um, and because it is a Jewish state, and everybody knows it is a Jewish state, it is now representing and informing people's ideas of Jews. And so I think a lot of this anti-Semitism comes from this being the representation and the picture of Judaism that people get. And I'm not saying that makes it okay, but it's very similar to how we see people react to Muslims after seeing the news of the Taliban and Iran and Pakistan and Saudi Arabia, you know, after 9-11, they're like, oh, a Muslim organization did this, or a Muslim country is oppressing women and using these laws to oppress women. So obviously Islam is very oppressive. Obviously Muslims are like all terrorists. It's the same thing that's happening here, is we're watching this country justify kicking out people and bombing civilians and doing so, you know, and committing a genocide. And not only that, is they're seeing all of these American Jews also rally around and support this country without question most of the time. And so now this is the representation, this is the picture that they are getting of Judaism and of the Jewish people. And so I know we're, you know, people should not conflate a religious group or an ethnic group based off of a country which uses their name. I definitely, like, this is wrong. You know, we should not be using 9-11 to justify our hatred for Muslims. We should not be looking at Muslim countries and being like, oh, well, all Muslims are like this because that's not true. You know, you can be, you don't, being a shitty government and a shitty oppressive state is not unique to certain religious groups or certain ethnic groups. Anyone throughout history, and everybody has been a really shitty oppressive ruler at some point or another. I mean, the US is not faring much better and we are actively getting a lot worse. Same thing with a lot of Europe right now. I mean, we were the original OG like oppressive rulers, you know? We're all doing shit at world leading. Um, <laughs> but it's the same thing and that's just, that's what people do because people are not getting exposed to these ideas and to this culture outside of these large news events. And then, you know, to see us actively support this horrible thing 
it doesn't reassure people that there can be a separation because you know at least with you know 9-11 and Iran Saudi Arabia Muslims in the US are like yeah no this is not us we are not for this and you know some people do believe that like modesty should be X Y and Z and you know down with America but the vast majority of American Muslims and other Muslims are like no this is a poor misrepresentation of Islam you know we don't support this they're oppressing us too because we're the ones living in these countries you know but then that's not what's happening with Jews with a lot of Jews in the US instead we're getting really defensive we are calling on support because this is because we just buy into this narrative that this is the only safe place that we can be even though it's actively at war a lot of the time um and I think that a lot of time Jews forget that this is informing people's idea of Judaism and that the more they support this and the worse that this situation gets, it's going to be harder and harder for people to really separate us from the state because we so closely align with the state. You know, even to go far as to create loopholes to justify what Netanyahu and his government are doing because we see it as the only way for the state to exist and in that way are for us to exist. Um, and that's why I really like what my dad pointed out. It was like, they're not a Jewish state because they don't follow Jewish law. They are not upholding Jewish values. Because that's something that we forget is that Israel is not upholding Jewish values. They are not following, you know, the law laid out in the Torah. They are not putting to practice repair of the world. They're actively making it worse. And if we can't see that, it's going to be a lot harder for non-Jews to see that. So I know that was a pretty heavy video. I thank you so much for following along. If you have any questions, please comment below. If there's anything else that you want to talk about, please follow, that you want me to talk about, please comment below. I love reading your comments and I love getting your suggestions um, because I am not the most creative person in the world and it is hard for me to think of what to talk about every single week. Um, I hope really that if you are being affected by this horrible ongoing tragedy that you are able to find solace in your community or find a community that you believe that you can belong to, that you can be feel safe in. Um, I hope you can get the resources that you need and yeah um i hope you have a good winter break um hanukkah is over but i hope you all had a happy hanukkah uh hanukkah if you celebrate that if you celebrate christmas have a merry early christmas um if you celebrate kwanzaa have a merry early kwanzaa um so yeah with that have a good rest of your winter we're almost at winter break at least my brother is so yeah so long and thanks for all the fish. Be excellent to each other and party on dudes.